know, we're uh, at New Mexico State very excited to uh, to be here, and uh, you know, we've uh, had a great time. Um, you know, our kids have really enjoyed it, uh, handled themselves well. Uh, Jeff and his crew have done an outstanding job as host, and uh, you know, I think our kids are excited to to play. These two gentlemen to my left, I talked to them on the way over here. And, uh, you know, I think they would sit, they'll would tell you the same things. Uh, we've enjoyed everything we've been involved in, and uh, our teams handle themselves in first-class manner. And uh, so, uh, you know, we're, we're looking forward to it. You know, we've, 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 had, we've enjoyed things and so forth, but uh, we'll continue. And, uh, but, uh, you know, our kids have done a great job. When it's time to have fun, they've had fun. When it's business time, they've handled business. And, uh, you know, right now, you know, I practice here in a little bit and it'll be all business. And, uh, and when they get some time, they get time. So they've handled things very well. I'm very proud of them. And uh, I think we all look forward to, uh, you go through a lot of things. I think we all look forward to getting on the field and, and uh, throw them out there and see what happens on both sides of the ball. So any questions for? Any Keith questions for Coach me? or Diego or Keyshawn? Diego uh, Will Weber from the San Fe newspaper. Um, I'm sure you grew up familiar with New Mexico State's football history. Is that right? Right. And it, it, just the fact that this team is on the verge of, of really one of the best seasons in school history, how would you explain the turnaround that this program has had in the last couple of years? Um, well, as a young child, you know, I wasn't really a fan of, of New Mexico State or uh, New Mexico. I was a fan of Oregon with Marcus Mariota. And I've always liked winners like Kobe Bryant and things like that. Um, but a huge factor is Coach Kill is a winner. And he brought the mentality of hard hat, lunch pill. We're going to work, you know, our tail end off for the people of Las Cruces. And, you know, everyone's hard hat, lunch pill there in, in, the, in the city of Las Cruces and the state of New Mexico. Um, you know, there's people come from poverty and things like that. But we're just really blessed to be here in this situation. I feel like the reason why we are winning and uh, our record is so good is just because we got people like Keyshawn, Coach Kill, leaders, Andre Seldon, um, Kenny Yarrow, Shias Pete, just people like that who really bought into the program and, you know, just were the leading force in helping us win. Uh, Coach Kill, kind of coming into the season, we talked about how there weren't that many seniors on this team and that leadership, that was something you were kind of worried about. Just what have you thought of how the senior class, even though there's only nine of them, have handled this season and what have they brought to this team? Well, I, I think, it, you know, I was worried about it. And, uh, you know, uh, but uh, the kids have responded to that, uh, mostly because of two guys up here and several other people that they've just mentioned. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, uh, early in the year, uh, you know, it's hard to get a group of people. We've had a big turnover. It's like everybody else in college football. I think we brought in 40 people, and then we had, you know, guys from last year. And to get everybody to understand their roles and be a team, uh, which is very hard to do this day and age. And uh, it took us a little bit. But once uh, once these guys got a hold of our kids and kids started responding, and, and uh, you know, and then we started to get a little better and a little better. And uh, and then the kids took off, and you know they they've done everything um, they could do. They've done everything Coach Kills asked them to do, and uh, you know they've had some shining moments, you know. And uh, but it's not because of coaching; it's because when they decided that they were going to be a good football team, they became a good football team. And coaches didn't do that; the kids did, and they had to figure it out, and and uh, they figured it out, not us. Just a follow-up question, Diego and Keyshawn. Uh, this is the first time in back-to-back -back bowls in 63 years. I spoke to a player on that team uh, in 1959, 1960. He told me for the past 60 years he's been embarrassed to call himself an Aggie and that he played for that team. And watching what you guys have done, he is now so proud to call himself an Aggie. What does that mean to you guys to hear that and, and how proud are you of being able to be a part of this turnaround? Good. Um, it seems like some, every time we win, it's something new for this program. 
So this is a huge opportunity for us. You know, as a team, we're excited, uh, but more excited for the state, especially alumni. You know, they never really got to experience this this type of season. You know, going down the stretch, being a Power Five team, that's huge. Um, you know, I'm just proud of the coaches and us players. You know, coming along, sticking together. Nobody thought we'd be in this moment, but here we are today. Um, you know, we, we wanted to do it for the alumni. Coach said they set the foundation for us. Um, we're going to do it for them. And, you know, just players on the team last year as well, you know, like Trevor Brohard and people like that, they set the foundation uh, starting last year. They taught me some things that helped me grow as a leader. And so just little things like that helped us, I feel like, become the team we are today. Coach Kill, back here in the back again. Uh, kind of along those same lines, um, you guys have, this program has never lost a bowl game um, in its history. Uh, to close the season out that you've had, this, you know, 10 wins and maybe get to 11, what would that mean to you to have a chance to do that and kind of be up there among the top teams in school history? Well, first of all, we hadn't, we hadn't played very many bowl games, so it's pretty good, pretty good odds that, you know, we, we did win a few, but I don't know how many bowl games that was. So it wasn't very many, so odds are pretty good. Uh, as far as winning 11 games and that kind of thing is that, uh, you know, this group, you know, and, and so forth, we like winning every game if we can. And uh, But there's also an opponent that we're going to play that's going to be very good and out, more than very good, outstanding. And uh, But uh, we we played some good people. And I don't know, we got a young enough team. I don't, just being around them this week and all that, I mean, you know, I'm, I don't think they're uptight. I mean, I, I mean, they just go play ball. They're not nervous. Sometimes I wish they were a little bit more nervous, but they just go play. And uh, you know, I just hope we get that. You know, I get that mental. You know, that mental part of the game. That's what we'll do tomorrow. But yet to be seen. But you know, eleven wins, ten wins, twelve wins. We like to win them all. We just didn't win them all. But uh, every win, you know, for our program. Uh, you know, we got ESPN. We got the state of New Mexico. And I want to make it real clear you know, is, you know, this is a great game for the state of New Mexico. You know, uh, you know, I respect the Lobos and the fact that if it was flipped, is I'd say the same thing of being down in Las Cruces. This is a great game for the state of New Mexico to be on ESPN and everybody's talking about it and you get off an airplane and people, hello, oh, man. You know, New Mexico, New Mexico State's going to be in a bowl game. It helps all of us. And so I want to make it perfectly clear uh, this is a great game for our state uh, to emphasize football. We have football here, you know, and we got good football here in New Mexico. But the only way you can prove it is win games and be on TV and be a part of conversation. And uh, so it's been, again, not only good for us, it's been good for Albuquerque, it's been good for Las Cruces, it's been good for the economy. Jeff's done a great job of doing that, and that's why this bowl game's been successful. But again, it's all about the state. It's just not about one thing. And, uh, you know, everybody says, hey, coach, why you wear a poncho all the time? Well, I don't wear it all the time, but I got a guy that started it, put it on my desk, said you never wear it. Ever since then, then he just keeps making me ponchos, okay? But you want to know something? Then I look at the trophy. Hey, this is our culture. I don't care who you are, where you're at, you're Lobo, you're Nagy. This is our culture, you know? This is who we are. And uh, we have adopted that culture. And, uh, and we'll stand out by it very proudly with all the people that are in Las Cruces, Albuquerque, whoever it is. This is who we are. And uh, we battle every day for everything we get. And uh, that's certainly in Las Cruces. So with that being said, I thought it was important, or I wouldn't have said it. Hey, guys. Uh, Julian with uh, KOAT. Uh, just talk about you guys' preparation for this game, the opponent that you guys are facing, um, and just your excitement level heading into this game come uh, tomorrow. So our preparation started you know, after uh, the Liberty game. We knew um, we were going to have a bull opponent, but we just kind of started working out found out who it was, and we got straight to business. Like Coach said, when it's business, it's business. Um, then there's extra uh, curricular activities, too. But, you know, I feel like we've always kept our head on straight. Just to, you know, we have a narrow, we, we know what we want to do. We want to win. That's what everyone on this team wants to do. 
So when, you know, it's business, everyone's focused on the business and everyone has the main goal of winning, winning 11 games. Like Coach said, we didn't win them all, but it was our goal too. And, you know, we just want to go out there and uh, put a show on for, for the fans of uh, New Mexico. I guess uh, if Coach Kill and Keyshawn could answer this, their, their quarterback, I think they were 8 and 1 when he got hurt. Um, and then uh, I, think, I think finished the season 0 and 3, but he'll be back in the bowl game. Just what do you see from him? And I guess what challenges does he present to you guys tomorrow? Go ahead, Keyshawn. Um, you know, watch the film. He's a good player. You know, he makes smart decisions. He stays in the pocket. He can throw the ball wherever he wants to. Um, I don't think he's the best we've seen. We've seen some pretty good quarterbacks this year. Uh, front, we know we got to affect the quarterback, keep him in the pocket. You know, and that's where you see most of our troubles when the quarterback's scrambling. Um, but you know, he's no different than anybody we played. So we just got to prepare like it's next week. Uh, you know, as far as uh, you know, uh, his abilities and things like that. I think the the kid knows how to win because they wouldn't be eight and one, and, and then he gets hurt, and they're not you know not as good. And now he's back. And uh, so, you know, I've watched a lot of film on him, uh, a lot, and, uh, and on their, their offensive football team. And he's great at getting the ball out of his hands. He's good at the short routes, you know, the quick three-step drop. He's good at the intermediate dra drops and throws. Uh, and then he'll unload the deep ball here and there. But, you know, he's very accurate. Uh, you know, he's not going to be like a, the kid from Liberty where he's going to run all over the place. But he's efficient and really doesn't have to. He's got a good offensive line to, to, to protect him. And uh, so uh, he's a difference maker for their ball club. And uh, I always say, you know, there's certain things you got to do. You can't turn over the ball. So which quarterback's going to not turn over the ball? And uh, that would be effective in the game. Which quarterback's going to play better? It is what it is. That's part of the pressure of that position. What defense is going to play the best? And in the bottom line, the game comes down to, you know, who's going to play best up front? Games are always won up front. And uh, you got to be good up front. And, uh, you know, when we beat Auburn, everybody goes, well, what happened there? We were better up front than they were, you know? And, they, and that's the, the bottom line. So, you know, we, uh, to me, we got to stop the run. I'm more worried we got to stop the run. They've got to stop the run for on our part. And then, uh, we got to make it, make him throw it. So when we know, you know, it's a lot easier to cover people if you know they're going to throw the ball. And uh, so we got to stop the run because they got a nice little run game and that, the running back's good. And then, you know, and then we were able to get more people and personnel. And you know, it's just, you know, it's just like the NFL. So, but uh, he'll be a challenge for us. And uh, we've had a lot of challenges, but uh, he'll definitely be a, a guy. You know, what he did early in the year is pretty remarkable. And then getting hurt, you know, you never like to see that on any player. And so, uh, you know, uh, hopefully he's healthy and, you know, hopefully Diego's healthy. We, you know, we, you only find out until they start playing. So I, that's what I'd say. So, Diego, on that note, you've been battling an injury yourself. We know you're going to obviously play a game and give it your all. But, I mean, how much confidence do you have in yourself to be able to, you know, play at full speed and play the game that you want to play? You know, I uh, – I'm always giving my all, and uh, I feel really confident in this game and my ability to make plays, go out there and just be myself, play with my swagger, just because, you know, I got a, I got a team that, you know, ride, rides with me. And those guys, uh, I'll do anything for them. And, you know, I feel like it's our, it's our best chance to win when, when I'm on the field. And so I'm going to go out there, you know, just do my thing, uh, be how I've been since these past 15 games, and, you know, um, we're going, to live, we're going to live with the result. Just kind of to follow up on that, Diego, what day do you start throwing? And then on a scale of 1 to 10, like how comfortable do you feel with your shoulder right now? Uh, I started throwing on uh, Sunday or Monday, one of those days. And you know, I feel, I feel really comfortable right now. Um, I'm making all the, all the right throws, just um, game speed is picking up. And just, you know, I'll be ready for the game. Get ready mentally. That's a, as the coach says, game's won from the neck up. And so, you know, I'm prepared mentally. Now we just got to go see on Saturday. Another injury you guys have been kind of having is Eli Stowers was kind of out injured uh, in that championship game with Liberty. I know he's back feeling healthy. Just how much does he bring to that team and, and give you as an option there? 
yeah, that kid is is a different specimen for sure. Um, you know, he's if you put the nickel on on Brady, he's matched up with the linebacker, and I haven't seen the linebacker in, in the country been able to guard him yet. So, you know, he's a matchup nightmare, and um, we'll be looking forward to seeing him on Saturday. Uh, this is for either one of you, or coach as well. You're about to wrap up probably the most successful season in New Mexico State history, at least one of them in the last 60 some years. Is there a certain level of satisfaction knowing that you're going to play this game in the facility of an in state rival that has always kind of seen itself at, his, at an elevated position from where you are? Do you, do you draw any satisfaction from that? You want to go first? Go ahead. Yeah. Is. Uh, is uh, I'm gonna make sure I get that right. <laughs> All right, I don't want to get tricked. So explain that question to me again. Just that you and I was you're finishing this season. Yeah. The facility of your in-state rival. Right. It's always kind of seen itself in a big brother capacity from where New Mexico State's in. Well, the the first the first part of that question you talked about games and all that is that there's three teams that are gonna play 15 games. That's two teams that are playing in a national championship game and us. 15 games is a lot of games for a young man to play. So I'm very complimentary of the kids and playing 15 games. Then we get into uh, the rival game, you know, I guess. And uh, rivalries are, you know, that's, that's what college football is all about. I was in the Big Ten. We had four of them. You know, we had the Axe. We played for the Liberty. You know, played for the Bell. We played for everything, the Pig. And... Uh, they, they were all intense, and that's the way they should be. And that's what makes college football. So, uh, you know, I never was a part of it in the last two years, and UTEP's also one of those. But uh, I don't think there's any question, you know, uh, you know, in New Mexico's, uh, you know, playing, playing them and uh, us in New Mexico State is that, uh, you know, it's uh, – I don't know how long they won and all that stuff before I got here. I don't pay attention to that. But, uh, you know, the last two games have been, you know, intense. Uh, uh, both teams played hard, and that's what you're supposed to do in a rivalry game. Now, us playing here and in, in, in the bowl game and playing, you know, in, in their home stadium and their facilities and all that kind of stuff, you know, hey, I always said I'll go play, I'll go play people. You know, I, if we play on the concrete, they don't – you know, when we're not in the stadium. When they want to play on concrete, we'll play on concrete. I don't care. You know, we happen to be here, and uh, you know, we appreciate being here. And uh, I always flip it. I always said if I was, I was on the other side of it because I've been on the other side of it. I'm telling you, there's nobody rooting for Liberty more than I am. Nobody. If I get a chance, I would go to the ball game because I respect good players, good teams, and so forth. So, I mean, that's – I love football and, and again, I love, you know, you know, who wants to go to – it can't be a rivalry game if you never win one. I was in <laughs> Southern Illinois and we lost Western Illinois 18 years and they go, this is the biggest rivalry game you're playing. How can it be a rivalry game if you never win? You know, so now we got a rivalry game. Hell, we won two games, you know, against them and, and uh, now we got a rivalry game. But, hell, we ain't playing them. You know, we're playing we're playing Fresno and State, and I, I know what kind of program. And nobody talks about you know you know uh, coaches come in and done a great job. You know he worked he was a defensive coordinator for uh, Tony Sanchez, and uh, that's how football world works. But Jet, you know Jeff Tedford is one of the best coaches in college football. I don't care what anybody thinks. I don't care what the media thinks. You know we need him in college football. And, you know, he may or not be, you know, in it. I don't know. But, uh, you know, my, my, my respect goes out to him and what he's done there, what he's done with the football team, very similar situation when I was at Minnesota. And, and what Coach is in is that uh, is like Tracy Clays. And Tracy Clays came in and, and, uh, and went to a bowl game and, and beat uh, Coach Leach at Washington State. And, uh, and then got fired in kind of a unique situation. But uh, and same thing with Coach. I don't want him coming in and winning and, and making, you know, like Tracy did. But, you know, uh, 
let's don't let's don't forget the job Jeff's done there, and uh, what kind of football coach he is. And my prayers go out to him and his family. And uh, that's more important than the game of football, by the way. You know.